For the following exercises, perform the indicated operation and express the result as a simplified complex number. Okay, so tons of questions that we already did like this in our playlist, the complex numbers playlist. Um, you can check out the link in the description. Uh, we will have that for you guys. Um, but I mean, if you're just joining us, let's, let's get down to it. All right. So the first one, we need to simplify this as a simplified complex number. Okay. So I have negative five plus three I all divided by two I. Now remember that I is an imaginary number. Now the rule of thumb for imaginaries is that we can never have an I value in the denominator. So no I value in denominator. So the question is, how do we get rid of this I value in the denominator? The rule of thumb is that you're always going to multiply whatever is in the bottom by the reciprocal or the opposite. So let's just try this out. So I'm going to multiply this by something that is the opposite of what is given. So I'm going to multiply not by two I, the opposite of two I would be a negative two I. Now you might be saying, well, how is that going to get rid of the I in the, in the bottom, but have no fear. Christina is here. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> but now the thing is, is that can you just multiply things out of thin air in math? No. And the thing that I always say is we always have to be fair. Math is all about fairness, believe it or not. Which means that if you multiply this denominator by a negative 2i, the numerator is going to feel left out. If you multiply the denominator by negative 2i, you have to multiply the numerator by the same exact thing. You got to be fair. And this answers the question of, you know, how do I just multiply these random things? You know, do I just randomly multiply something in thin air? No, because what does a negative 2i divided by a negative 2i equal? Oh, they, they cancel out. So in essence, we're literally multiplying something by one, which would give us the same answer here. But in theory, we can do the math to simplify and get those i's out. Okay, so let's work with the uh, numerator first. What's happening is I have a negative five plus three i I'm putting it in parentheses because this whole thing is being multiplied by the negative two I. And that's all being divided by the denominator two I times negative two I, right? Oh, and yep, they, they both have to be negative. Okay. Let's work with the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just rewrite this just so that we have it. So negative five plus three I, and it's all being multiplied by a negative two I. Remember, we have to be fair. If we're multiplying the negative five by the negative two I, we have to multiply the three I by the two I. So let's try it out. Negative five times a negative 2i would be a 10i. Negative times a negative is a positive. And then 3i times a negative 2i would be a negative 6i squared. You had two i's here, i here and i here. You picked up two i's, so it turns into an i squared. So this is what the top one is. 10i minus 6i squared. Now let's just work with the bottom. 2i times a negative 2i. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4, right? And then i times i, you picked up 2i, so that's an i squared. So this is all being divided by a negative 4i squared. Okay, so now what we can do is 
we can try to get this into a simplified complex number. So what I'm going to do here is maybe I can move this down a little bit. Let's see, just so that we have some room. I'm going to maybe move this top part up. Okay, perfect. So I have a little bit of room right here to write. Now, a simplified complex number is when we have a real number, which just means a number one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera. Um, plus an imaginary number. The imaginary number is the number that is with just an I, and you're only allowed one I. In our instance here, we have I squareds. So the question is, how do I get rid of those I squareds? Let me put it up here. Remember guys that an I squared really equals just a negative one. Write this down, star this up. This is your key to getting rid of these I squareds. So if I just rewrite this now, 10 I minus six, not times a negative one, uh, sorry, not times an I squared, it actually times by a negative one. And this is all over minus four, a negative four, not times by an I squared, but just multiplied by a negative one. So what do we got now? 10 I negative six times a negative one is a positive six all over negative four times a negative one is a four. And look here, do I have any I values in my denominator anymore? Absolutely not. That's how you get rid of the I's in the denominator you have to multiply by its opposite. So two I, we multiply by a negative two I. Now I just have to clean this up. Remember a real value has to come first in the simplified complex number. That's just, you know, the, the basic rule. So I'm just going to swap these. So instead of saying 10 I plus six, this is really a six plus 10 I. I'm just putting that real number in the front just so that I stick to my standard simplified complex notation. And now what happens if I have two numbers being divided by the same number, I can split them up. So maybe what I'll do is, um, I'm going to get rid of this bottom part. So if you need to pause the video and write it down, be my guess, but oh, there it goes get so sad when my work has to leave, but just makes room for new work. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to split these terms up into six divided by four, right? That's the first term plus plus 10 divided by four, right? 10 I divided by four. And now we can simplify, right? six divided by four, the common number between them is a two. So two times what will get me four, two, two times what will get me six, three. And the same thing goes for this one, right? The common number between 10 and four is two, two times two will get me four, two times five will get me 10. So there is my final answer. Three over two, that's the remainder of what's going on with the first real number plus five over two I. And you could put the I like this, or you could put the I up here. It doesn't matter. I'll just put it over here because it, for me, it looks nicer. <laughs> and that's your final answer for this one. Okay. All right. Let's try the same idea for the second one. So I have six plus four I all over an I. Oof, okay, we said that we don't like I's in the denominator, so we need to multiply by something that's the opposite of a positive I. Oh, I can multiply it by a negative I. That's the opposite. And remember, you gotta be fair. Whatever you multiply the denominator by, you have to multiply the numerator. Because in theory, this cancels out to being one, and that's how we can just multiply things in thin air. <laughs> so now this turns out to be six plus four I 
all being multiplied by a negative i divided by, I'm rhyming today, <laughs> i times a negative i. Okay, so let's run with the top first. Let's run with the numerator. Let's do this actual math. So I'm going to rewrite that down here. So we have a 6 plus 4i, and we all need to multiply that by a negative i. So in math, we got to be fair. I need to multiply this 6 by that i value, and then I need to multiply the 4i by that i value. So 6 times a negative i is a negative 6i. 4i times a negative i would be a negative 4, and they both had i values, so this turns into an i squared. That's the top number, negative 6i minus 4i squared. Let's now work with the denominator. i times a negative i is, 1 times a negative 1 is a negative, right? And I have two i's, I picked them both up, so that's i squared negative i squared. And what I'm going to do like I just did before, I'm going to move this all down just so that I have room. Because simplified notation, I cannot have these i squareds. And remember, an i squared is just a negative 1. So I'm going to input a negative 1 here. And I'm going to input a negative 1 here. So 6i, negative 6i, minus 4 times a negative 1 all over negative, because the negative was here, right? And let me make that more certain. This negative is this negative, and then it's a negative 1. So I can simplify this by saying negative 6i, negative 4 times a negative 1 is a plus 4 all over negative times a negative 1 is a plus 1, so it's just a 1. And now I'm going to do the same thing that I did before, right? A negative 6i plus 4, I need to get that real number in the front. So this is the same thing as saying 4 minus 6i, just to get that 4 in the front, the real number in the front. And if it's being divided by 1, I don't really have to write that down. I can just get rid of it. So this would be your answer, 4 minus 6i. And that's it. Let's go on to the third one. OK, 2 minus 3i all over 4 plus 3i. I, <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. I for i. Um, there's an i in the denominator, right? I don't like i's in the denominator, so I have to multiply this by something that is the opposite of this little function part on the bottom. So what's the opposite? Well, it's 4 plus 3i, so I will multiply the whole thing by 4 minus 3i. That's how we do the opposite. And remember, I can't just multiply this on the bottom, I have to be fair, so I have to multiply the whole top by 4 minus 3i. And now let's get to it. So this would be the same as saying 2 minus 3i all multiplied by 4 minus 3i all over, oop, color change, <laughs> 4, 4 plus 3i times 4 minus 3i. Whichever one you want to work with, let's work with the numerator first. So let's do this math to get some number on the top here. I'm going to write this on the bottom. So I have 2 minus 3i times 4 minus 3i, and we have to be fair. The 2 wants to be multiplied by the 4 and the negative 3i, but then that negative 3i wants to be multiplied by the 4 and the negative 3i. So let's see what we get. Actually, I'll put this on the bottom here. So 2 times 4 is 8. 2 
times negative 3i is a negative 6i. Now we just move to the second term. Negative 3i times 4 is a negative 12i. And then negative 3i times a negative 3i is a positive 9i squared. I picked up both i's. So now I just simplify. Negative 6i, oop, went a little bit too overboard. Ne negative 6i minus 12i, those are common. So this would be 8 minus 18i. Negative 6 minus 12 is a negative 18, plus 9i squared. Remember, we do not like i squared. So as soon as I make one, I like to get rid of it. So this is the same thing as a negative 1, plus 9 minus 18i, 8, right? A 9 times a negative 1 is now going to be a negative 9. 8 minus 9 is a, what is it, 8 minus 9 is a negative 1. And then minus 18i. This is your answer to the top part. So the top part is a negative 1 minus 18i. Now we have to do the same math for the bottom. And by doing the math, we will see that the i will get canceled in the denominator. So let's see. I just need to erase because we have more, more work to do. So 4 plus 3i times 4 minus 3i. We got to play fair. The 4 wants to be multiplied by that 4 and the negative 3i. And then the 3i wants to be multiplied by the 4 and the negative 3i. So let's start. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times a negative 3i is a negative 12i. 3i times 4 is a plus 12i. 3i times a negative 3i is a negative 9i squared. I picked up the two i's. Simplify. Negative 12i plus 12. That cancels. So now I have just 16 minus 9i squared. And remember, i squared is just a negative 1. So this would be 16 minus 9 times a negative 1. 16 minus ne negative 9 times a negative 1 is a plus 9. So 16 plus 9 is 25. And that's the number that goes on the bottom. And you see how we don't have an i anymore. Now, I just can simplify this, right? I have two numerator values that's being divided by the same denominator, so I can split these up. I could say that negative 1 is being divided by 25, so negative 1 over 25. And then I can say that the negative 18i is being divided by 25, so minus 18 over 25i. This is your real value. This is your imaginary value. And it looks like I can't simplify this anymore, right? 18 and 25, there's no number that is common between them. So this is your final answer. Woohoo! Guys, these are much more complicated because there's just a lot of steps. But just as long as you go slow, step by step, you guys got this, all right? Math is fun. I, I hope, you know, we're, we're having some fun. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> What, what do you think? Um, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that, that would help us out greatly. And I thank you so much for that. But anyway, enjoy your day, guys. All right. Keep studying hard. Let's do awesome on those tests. And I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.